Well, it's certainly becoming more difficult as my life, um, you know, expands and becomes more complex with two young children. Um, and as I get older too, it's just more challenging to put in the same workload that I used to, but yeah, I think when it's your job, um, you, you just kind of make it happen. I mean, for me, it's always been something that I've been passionate about and I, yeah, I love it enough. So it's not hard for me, I guess, to get out the door and do it. I am actually more baffled, um, as you touched on by the age group athletes who have jobs, families, and they're also training, you know, 25 to 30 hours a week. Um, and somehow yeah. recovering and doing it week after week after week. That's the one that really gets me. But uh, when it's your job, I would say, you know, it is, it's tough. No, no question. Um, but yeah, when the passion is there, it's just something that you do because it's what's required to reach the level you want to. And um, yeah, there's enough hours in the day, I'd say. Well, that's the part I, I do wonder about. Is there an element of they're not measuring if they are recovering during these sessions? Like how many age group athletes would go faster, which is the ultimate goal by doing a little bit less and prioritizing recovery a little bit more. I do see that with cyclists who are trying to balance conflicting demands on their time as well. It's like, you know what, squeezing yeah. two and a half, three hour session in after work in between feeds with the kid, like you'd be a, probably a lot better to do 60 minutes and stretch for 30 minutes. I fully agree. I mean, I think even in this day and age of, you know, whoop devices, monitoring HRV, we've got all the gizmos, but the reality is that people are probably more stressed than they've ever been. And, you know, to me, it's always a pretty simple equation of stress plus rest equals growth. And uh, I think people often get that equation wrong and they end up stressing their bodies way more than they're, you know, recovering and uh, you don't get the, the positive stimulus out of it. So, and like you said, it's, you know, getting sleep, eating food, and then also just the other stresses of life. I mean, you know, financial, uh, children, whatever it might be, they all pile up. And I think people tend to underestimate them. And man, even things like social media can be, you know, kind of a drain sometimes. So yeah, it all, it's all out there. There's coming from every angle. And I think, you know, that's kind of been the thing that I've learned a little bit more as I've gotten older and hopefully a little wiser and more mature is that, uh, you really have to prioritize the recovery and you don't need to go, you know, gangbusters in every session or, always try to match what you did when you were younger. It often doesn't pan out and isn't something sustainable. So yeah, I would say for most people out there, you know, erring on the side of maybe a little bit less would be probably more beneficial um, to go faster and, and achieve those, you know, top results like you were talking about. Do you think the job is slightly changing from when you turned pro? Like when you turned pro, cycling or triathlon, I think it was more of an absolute focus on winning races times being competitive against your peers while that's still important and if you're the goat and you're winning these races that's still very valued but there's almost a secondary element which seems to be valued as much and that's the personal brand we're seeing a lot of athletes that aren't the top athletes they're kind of mid-pack athletes but they're building quite a big brand and they're able to you know command quite big paychecks and endorsements off the back of that i fully agree yeah i mean I look at even a generation before me, people like Craig Alexander, Chris McCormick, and, you know, they embrace social media to some degree, but I think they kind of were in this, I guess, halcyon period, you know, where it was like they could just basically focus on training and, you know, show up at a few races a year, really nailed at the world championships and um, not have to worry so much. And I've had conversations with Crowe, with Craig Alexander, where, you know, I think he's quite appreciative um, to have been in that sort of, yeah, time period when it wasn't really maybe the same requirement. Um, that said, some people really thrive on it, right? I mean, some people really like this stuff. It gives them a lot of energy to get out there and kind of build that brand, like you said, do the YouTube channel, um, constantly be on social media. But for me, yeah, it's kind of, it's been something that's actually kind of come in, you know, from the start of my career till the end. Um, it's something that's really blossomed, I guess, and, and it has been something that's shifted. Um, but yeah, I feel like, and, and I've done kind of maybe a bit of a, compared to the youngest generation coming through now, I don't do nearly as much as they do. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've had it pretty good actually. And I do enjoy it from time to time, but I don't think that, especially again, with two young children now and just being a bit older, I just don't have the same bandwidth, you know, to, to tackle all this. But to your point, um, yeah, there, there are different, um, I guess, ways to earn a living in the sport, probably more pathways now or different pathways. And, uh, you know, with the, the beauty of the internet is that you can connect with people all around the world, just like we are right now. And, uh, you know, somebody who maybe didn't have a voice before can have one. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. Um, but it's uh, it's certainly a, a world where everyone can be seen and heard now. 
what's the perception in the professional triathlon uh, collective to athletes that are really embracing it? Like I'm thinking Lionel Sanders. Do people look <laughs> like a little bit funny at him? Is it like, you know, what are you doing? Are you a social media influencer? Or are you an athlete? Or what's the perception about him? Yeah, I mean, personally, I would say I know Lionel a little bit, you know, I mean, I've raced against him plenty of times. He actually lives um, about 45 minutes from me here. And, you know, I'm in Tucson, Arizona right now. He's in Oro Valley, which is just like a little suburb of Tucson. And yeah, it's, you know, it's a bit of both, I would say. Um, Certain people think that it's a bit of a joke, I think, and that it's um, maybe he should be focused more on, you know, the performance side. But Lionel's, he's a tough example, I guess, because he's the guy who's still winning races, right? He's still up there um, in most most cases. I mean, maybe his performance at some of the world championships hasn't been perfect in the last few, but he's an incredible athlete and he's still winning races. And then he's also doing the YouTube stuff. And I feel like he has a, a decent balance in the sense of um, it doesn't feel like he puts an incredible amount of energy into it. It feels like maybe it's more of the people around him that are helping, you know, do those things. I mean, he has to sit down and do the conversation, of course, but it's not like he's the one doing all the filming and editing and everything else. So I think he mainly just kind of talks to the camera here and there. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think for me, um, you know, it's more of a perspective of, is this healthy for him? Is this something that is actually helping his performance? Is it something that he enjoys doing and uh, is a real ad? I mean, financially it probably is. And I guess, you know, it depends on what you're after. If your only goal is high performance, then maybe this is extraneous. Um, but yeah, I would say everyone's opinion is a little bit different. Mine's kind of a balance where I'm like, personally, I never had the interest in dedicating this kind of energy and time to it because I did, I thought it was a distraction. Um, and, and inevitably too, you know, you're going to get, yeah, a lot of opinions, a lot of people out there. And he's certainly not insulated from that. We've seen that, you know, I think he takes that, uh, he takes that on and it doesn't seem like it's always a benefit for him. You know, he's not getting a uh, positive feedback from everybody out there. Obviously there's plenty of haters. And so, um, when you internalize that, I think it kind of tends to impede your performance. And, um, I question, yeah, whether it's actually a, a positive for him, but, um, it's probably a positive for the bank account.